that's just got him. That's such a massive advantage on the golf course, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's huge. But the point is that people are saying that these clubs are lost in there. <laughs> right, we're back down. It's full golf, Chester. It's a little bit chilly start to this morning. We've got, yeah, there he is. Lewis is back on the channel. He's setting up what is a a very new iron. It's the Epic Forge, and it's a very strong lofted iron. It's 27 degrees, and we've dug out a very old club. Well, it's 10 years old. The gap between these two clubs is 10 years in terms of uh, in terms of their age of manufacture. But the difference in loft is zero. They're both lofted at 27 degrees. And I want to see what's the difference between a seven iron, 27 degrees, a five iron, 27 degrees, and see what happens in terms of the performance characteristics. Only one way to find out, let's get in some golf balls. And Louis, good to be back? Good to be back, yeah. I think I'll be hitting the summer as well, all right, so. All ready to go? All ready to go. Let's get started. Right, so what I'm going to do before, uh, hopefully you can uh, see me back there, but uh, what I want to do, Lou, is get some immediate feedback with uh, five iron first. We're going to start with the G15. I'll ask you the same on that. And I'm, when, I'm just talking about general feel yeah. uh, and overall visually what you see before we get swayed by numbers. There's a little bit of offset, a little bit more. Yeah, I think this club in particular, line, yeah. I think that's, uh, yeah, that, that's what this club that is game, to that, have. That yet, product so. is, yeah. I do want to know how you get straight out the blocks and it's, uh, you've had a minimal warm up to say the least. It's not a bad shot. No, it was a good but, shot. <clears throat> um, First, feel, yeah. you know, solid, visually, just, you know, solid, not, you know, quite flat. Yeah, I, th I think, think I'd there. describe that as a, a, a traditional five iron <coughs> ball flight. That's what I'd probably expect to see. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah. You could game these, Lou. I tell you what, that's they've landed on top of one of them. Straight is he? <laughs> but that's what you expect. You know, easy to hit. Um, obviously, it's cast a little bit harder. Yeah. You know, offset top of button. Interesting thing to mention as well. We've got exactly the same length of shaft in both of these. Yeah. Because that's something that people might pick up on. Um, that's fine. So we'll carry on with this. Get your numbers, and then we'll do the same with the seven iron. Okay. Right. Sorry to interrupt, but I've got a quick question for you. At this point in the video. Which would you rather use, a 27 degree 5 iron or a 27 degree 7 iron? Seems a simple enough question, but where we are right now, what would you rather use? Comments down below. Right, so Lou, data collected. Over to the, uh, the, the new... So straight, well, straight away, top line isn't massively different. Isn't it? It's not massively different. So there's a considerable less offset. Yeah. Um, obviously different finish. But um, can tell lengths are the same. It does. Yeah. You know, it's a little bit longer for a seven iron. But... Oh wow, that's a super shot. Even the noise. Yeah, it was a lot softer, wasn't it? I didn't pick on the noise until I was watching the shot, but <coughs> it was a lot no. softer sound. Completely different. But it's gone into that space, that hasn't it? Yeah, it was a different launch altogether. That's uh, that's what I would expect to see from from a seven iron. Yeah. You know what? You know that stamp on the bottom so that's two balls super shots tell you what you you're in, you're in the ball i mean what i like is that uh, again why lewis has been brought in just for, for this type of video is perfect to see again consistency of strike which obviously has been good on all shots that we've seen so far so same again I mean, sound and feel. I can, I can hear it, and, and I'm not hitting I the ball. It picks it up on the audio because dramatically different. But yeah. the, for, for me, it's what happens out there. Yeah. And it's it, you know, the numbers. I'm hoping will suggest because visually you can see it definitely different went. flights. Uh, visually, we can see where it's landing yeah. going further. Yeah. Um, but all round, I think looks, feel, yeah, distance, performance. Well, uh, yeah. You know, 
you, we're not trying to find any. You know, we're not reviewing this club, are we? We're just no, no. It's, it's all about it's all about like <coughs> I say, modern technologies. So carry on, hit the rest of the shots. Let's get your data on that, and then it's uh, it's my turn. I'm itching, mate, to hit a golf shot. Right, I'm going to have the benefits alluded now. This is the two clubs alongside him, and uh, the size of profile. I'll throw some clips up for you now. Is hugely different. He's right about the top line. Not a lot, but it is thinner on the Epic Forge. But it's the back end, the amount of club you see behind the ball is hugely different and a heel to toe overall size again is massively different and that's what i said in the intro if they can if anyone this whole thing about technology and progression if they pack what i think they may have done inside of that size ahead compared to what they did 10 years ago then i think it really dispels the theory that you know clubs are the same as they were 10 years ago i mean straight away size and profile alone is absolutely i would totally agree so i'm going to try five iron and uh, get some. It's not a bad ball. Good hit. Yeah. Good strike. Yeah, it's okay. What's your What's your first thoughts on the flight, though? Well, the flight for me, I mean, I know straight away. I hit the ball a lot higher than Lou. Um, in general, my ball flight is different. So it's a It's a, a bit weaker, more floaty ball flight. So that was higher than you hit it, but um. Yeah. I mean, I'm, listen, if I was starting a game of golf and people say again about golf being expensive, I don't know what these retail at. There's nothing wrong with these golf clubs. Absolutely And that, not. That, that's not the point of this exercise. That ball's gone fine. Absolutely fine. Two shots I hit. I can get around the golf course with these no problem at all. I that, don't think you are. That's one of the main reasons we didn't go for a weak lofted modern club, I think, isn't it? Because yeah, it's... it's uh, <clears throat> they, they, these are perfectly... These were the market leaders game improvement irons of the day, weren't they? They were doing what they were supposed to do 10 yeah. years ago, and that was make this game a little bit easier in terms of launch. And there's nothing wrong with that. I know for a fact, and I'm going to say fact without looking at numbers, that's nowhere near what I'll hit a five iron nowadays. And I've, I'd argue that I'd even hit that longer. I, I, the big thing for me is, if you told me you were hitting a seven iron, yeah. I'd visually go, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. See that in flight, see that in the distance. You know, yeah. We hit a lot of balls in here, don't we? Um, I, I'll carry on it in these. Let me get me, let me get my numbers on my five iron, and then it's over to uh... right. I mean, in terms of looks, visuals. I mean, they're literal chalk and cheese. In terms of uh, this is a far different looking club. But how does it perform? I mean, it's only just come down. That's what I was going to say. That is in the air a lot longer than what I've just been hitting five irons for. Ball flight is, um, well, I think, let's hit a couple. I mean, that was a bit off the bottom groove as well, but still, again, my immediate reaction is this, and uh, I'll carry on hitting the balls until I find, uh, get, get the data in full. The ball flight is incredibly different. I think that... Um, in two balls there, they're a lot higher in terms of peak height. I don't know what the launch you know, but in terms peak, of peak... Peak height up, ball speed up. It is. Just off a couple of hits, so yeah. know, we'll hit a few more and get it, but yeah. it, and it, you know, visually it uh, backs up there. Oh, I mean, it's just there. literally, these are, these are different balls in terms of where they're going to, in terms of uh, into that sky. Um, feel is a lot softer, different animal altogether, like I said, in terms of that kind of performance. But I'll carry on in these balls collect some data and uh, I'll give you an overall evaluation from both Louis's perspective um, who's like I said a more consistent ball striker and also from mine as an average golfer. That's such a massive advantage on the golf course isn't it? Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, but the point is that people are saying that these clubs are lofty. And the dispersion's a lot closer to the flat. I don't think I could hit that flight, 
Right, so it's back inside for the summary, and uh, one thing I've got to do first of all is apologise to Lewis because he's been deleted from the original summary. So sorry, Lewis, you've been dropped, mate. But there's a reason for that. We did a summary, which was an immediate reaction to what we found, and it's very similar to what I'm going to tell you now, but with a slight addition, because since the days after I did the video, I thought about it in a slightly different way, which we'll get to shortly. So yeah, apologies to Lewis, but... We'll start with his numbers, straight into the numbers, because that's where all the explanation lies. Lewis's numbers in front of you now, and it's a straight comparison of the overall averages. So you've got five iron and seven iron. And with Lewis, uh, bottom numbers being his, uh, his five iron, 124 ball speed as opposed to 128. Six two spin, six one, very similar. Um, slight increase in carry with the seven iron, which was seven yards, uh, one degree or almost one degree in terms of launch angle and 10 feet in terms of peak height. So not huge differences there, certainly what we've seen out there, which is a higher ball fight, higher launch and a longer carry, six or seven yards. And again, we're not taught, this is not about distance, is it? Distance is not the key here. There's, there's more to it than that. And, and I'll get to that when you look at my numbers and I think we'll just get straight into them. Now, when you see my numbers, you start to see some significant differences. So ball speed 113 as opposed to 121, unreal. Uh, I spin it higher with the new seven iron, 5.4 as opposed to 5.1. 14 yard additional in carry, 16.9, almost three degrees in terms of the launch angle and in terms of peak height, a significant difference in terms of where that ball got out to. And hopefully you can see from the action, reaction when, when I hit the ball in particular, the difference that it made. And I think first of all, it highlights one major thing is that the better player you are, the less reliant you are on the technology that clubs give. But I think what it also goes to show is that the technology that is in these clubs certainly goes a long way to help the average golfer. And if you look at it in one aspect, it brought my carry distances, my numbers, up to where not as long as, but it put me in the ballpark uh, of Lewis. So it almost closed the gap, which is, in theory, it, it shouldn't really happen. It shouldn't be allowed, that's not right. But his ability to find the centre of the club face more regularly, his consistency of strike meant that, I don't think his differences, his gains, were anywhere near what I saw. But for me, don't forget what this channel is all about. Like I said, there's lots of professionals that review golf clubs and perhaps would relay the, relay the information that we've just seen there from Lewis as being no major difference. But I review golf clubs from the perspective of an average golfer, so a handicap golfer. And there's major differences to be seen there. And the question that, like I said, I missed, because forgetting the fact that, you know, in terms of the profile, I much preferred the profile, and so did Lewis, I won't repeat, like I said, I'll have to relay some of the information recorded in here, summary. Apart from liking the looks of what is in the Epic Forge in this instance, uh, far better. The performance gains were there. But these are the way I look at it. Very brief in terms of Lewis, ball speed up, carry distance up, and I'm reading off paper as you need, launching higher, higher peak height, steeper descent angle which isn't on those numbers there and then for my numbers well it's a significant gain and a question i've got and the one that i didn't ask in the original summary was this the comment comes in quite frequently that when you're testing a seven iron a stronger lofted seven iron and i'm talking about a 30 degree seven iron now often the comments will be made well that's not a seven iron you're testing it's a it's a traditional five iron well it's it's clearly not and my question is this and i asked it midway through the video is if I've got a choice, I'm 170 yards into a green, and I've got a decision, I've got a choice of two clubs. I can either pay, play the ping G15, 27 degree, or I can play same distance, same carry, 170 yards. I, well, I can't get that actually out of the ping G15, but I can choose to play the new with the modern technology, with the lower CG, with the steeper uh, launch angle, steeper descent angle, higher peak height, I've got two choices. I've got a choice to make between one of those two clubs. I ask you that question, which would you choose? Because what I can't understand when I do these videos is that choice to me seems very, very straightforward. And I must be missing a major point here because like I said, my, the, the point, I've done these videos before, similar of similar nature, but this more clear than ever has highlighted to me that I would never understand I understand why people might want to stick to traditions, but to say that technology is not moved on in clubs is, I find bewildering. And I think that's as obvious as I've ever seen it to suggest there is a huge leap 
in the changes that are made. So from seven iron or five iron, well, I'm picking the seven iron all day long if I've got that choice. You then go to this idea that most of the criticisms about strong or lofty clubs relates to, it's all about distance. Everybody talks about distance being the thing. And for me, it's not about distance. It's been able to carry a distance with a great launch angle, great peak height, great spin number, and being able to land into greens from 170 yards than, than the opposite, which is trying to hit it with that lower ball fight of the five iron that we've tried. They're the differences. And yardage is nothing to do with it in terms of how far you're carrying it. But the idea, the next thing that is potentially said is that, oh, what's the point you need five wedges in your bag? Well, again, you don't. I think, again, we take comments to extremes. And I've worked back some numbers, and again, I'll read these from you. So if I'm on 170 on my seven iron, I'm 168, 159, 140 pitching wedge, 130 gap wedge. Okay, let's assume 10 yard differences. And at the other end of the bag, I'm 186 iron, 195 iron, okay? That equates for seven irons. I've then got the option to put two wedges in the bottom end of the bag. I can put a hybrid, a three wood, a driver, and a putter. Add all them together, that's 13 clubs. And I've still got room for one more club, whether it be another wedge or another thing at the top end of the bag that I prefer to hit. But either way, it again comes down to this. If I've got to put more wedges in the bag to cover distances down the bottom end, well, I'd prefer to have a shorter club with more loft on it any day of the week in the bag, if they're my options, than having to go down the longer end of the bag to try and resolve my issue. So like I said, go by that five iron number from me, and what is it? Carrying 160, you try and work that backwards up to the top end of the bag or lower end of the bag and... and, and translate those launch angles, those peak heights at either end. And a game is a lot more difficult than it is, in my opinion. And I can't see it any other way at the moment in terms of that modern technology. And I really enjoyed doing the video, but the numbers for me were the first time where we've highlighted something so visible that for me, it's hard to ignore. But as ever, it's just an opinion and it's providing some information, some feedback to you, the average golfer. Do it what you will, interpret it as you please, and as ever, comments down below. And uh, more importantly, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you all soon. That's me, I'm done.